dealing with the appeal of Mohammed Kasab. Mohammed Kasab was specially represented by an amicable, a distinguished lawyer of the Supreme Court, Mr. Raju Ramachandran. There were detailed arguments which were presented over a few months and the arguments involved, shall we say, issues of criminal law, constitutional law, the rights of the accused, and we also dealt with certain elements of public international law in the concept of an offence against the Indian state. The Supreme Court has today dismissed the appeal of Muhammad Qasab. It has confirmed the findings on evidence, on a scrutiny of the same. The evidence was placed before the court de novo by both parties. So the court has had a chance to appreciate the evidence completely. Uh, the court has also had an occasion to deal with constitutional questions about voluntariness in making confessions. It has also made an important pronouncement about the right to legal representation at the stage an accused person is produced before the court in the first instance, even before the stage of trial. Ultimately, uh, this is a case which I think illustrates the due process of law and the rule of law which is guaranteed under the Constitution, irrespective of who the accused is and what the crime is. There has to be trial in accordance with law. The best possible points were put forward dispassionately on behalf of the accused. They have been considered and the court has ultimately dismissed the appeal and upheld the sentence. From my, from my point of view, I would like to say as a prosecutor who argued this case, this was a case which was argued completely in a professional manner and uh, very much like certain other cases where cases have been argued in a totally professional and dispassionate atmosphere, we've been able to have a judgment which deals with not only the evidentiary aspects of this case or the crime, but also deals with important constitutional and legal issues. So for me, I would say I respectfully bow down to the verdict and I would say it is a complete victory of the due process and as a practicing lawyer, I think India must feel proud that in its democracy we give every accused an opportunity to present his case. The court does not allow an accused to be convicted unless he is properly represented and his contentions are heard objectively in a spirit of calm. So I think that that is the summation I would like to make of the judgment. Sir, main part Hindi mein bata dijiye. Main part as far as the as far as the accompanying appeals are concerned, since they are appeals against concurrent acquittal, their concurrent acquittal has not been disturbed. Raju sir, one question that comes to mind is there is so much um, uh, money has gone into the maintenance and upkeep of uh, Kasab. Uh, uh, there are uh, legal sir, remedies sir, which still remain. Sir, 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 Hindi me sir, 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 एक बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण निर्णय दिया है जहां पे जो अपील प्रस्तुत किया गया था मोहम्मद कसब से उस अपील को निरस्त किया है और उस निर्णय में बहुत सारे संविधानिक जो महत्वपूर्ण तत्व हैं वो आपको प्रदर्शित होंगे लेकिन जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका है वो ये है कि हमारे देश में एक एडवर्सरियल सिस्टम ऑफ जस्टिस है जहां पे प्रत्येक व्यक्ति को सुना जाता है और किसी व्यक्ति को बिना ट्रायल के 
बिना वाद विवाद के उसको खंडित नहीं किया जाता है और इस प्रकार ये जो केस चला काफ़ी महीने चला यहाँ पे क्योंकि इसमें कई सारे लीगल क्वेश्चंस थे कई सारे इश्यूज जो पब्लिक इंटरनेशनल लॉ के थे और जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण फाइंडिंग है वो ये है कि ऐसे ऑफेंसेस जो हैं प्रिंसिपली ऑफेंस ऑफ वेजिंग वॉर अगेंस्ट द स्टेट है वो बात भी बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है दो और आरोपी थे और उनका क्या हुआ? वो जो कंकारंट एक थे तो वो कंफर्म किए गए हैं उनको डिस्टर्ब नहीं किया गया है सर हम जानना चाहेंगे सर आई बाउ टू दर्डिक ऑफ द कोर्ट आई वॉज गिवन फुल ऑपरचुनिटी एज अक स्क्यूरिंग टू आर्ग्यू ऑल दैट कुड लेजिटिमेटली बी आर्ग्यूड ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द अक्यूज let us all take pride in a judicial system which stands by due process whoever be the accused whatever be the nature of the crime i completely endorse Sir, one moment please i completely endorse the views of the amicus curiae this is actually this is a victory for due process it's a victory for the administration of justice it is important that our judicial institutions must be viewed as a cornerstone in constitutionalism and i think this case itself should illustrate to us that notwithstanding public sentiment notwithstanding feelings you need to have a trial which goes by the rule of law more importantly it shows the ability of the court to be able to dissociate itself from feelings or from public sentiment and look at a case objectively on the basis of evidence in this case we all made an effort to really conduct the case purely in terms of professional presentation of evidence so i endorse the amicus curiae's observation that this really is a success of the due process we are not concerned shall we say an individual his conviction or the sentence to which he is subjected to but what is important is the manner of arriving at that conclusion and have we done it in a manner which is completely constitutionally acceptable in all democracies of the world where human rights are accepted whether it be in the european court or whether it be in any other democracy in our country we also have constitutional standards of due process and i think the supreme court has justified shall we say that fundamental obligation of due process in dealing with this matter elaborately and with great shall we say effort gopal sir supreme court ne apna sankshep order jo sunaya tha kin kin mukho muddon ko uthaya tha kin baaton ko kaha tha wo sankshep mein aur bata dijiye please kya court ne kaha tha apne order mein देखिए हमें तो कोर्ट की जजमेंट को पढ़ने का अवसर प्राप्त नहीं हुआ है हम तो वहां जो कहा था सर वो बताए कोर्ट में जो बताया दी पॉइंट विच आई थिंक आई वुड सब्जेक्ट विच वे रिकलेक्टेड वे द फर्स्ट वॉज वेदर देर आर हायर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल स्टैंडर्ड इन इवेल्युएटिंग अ कन्फेशन कंपेयर टू द स्टैंडर्ड विच आर प्रिस्क्राइब्ड इन द कोर्ट ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर एंड द एविडेंस एक्ट and the court said that the constitutional rights of due process and fair play and the right against self incrimination involve a manifestation in due compliance and procedural laws in other words there is no artificial dichotomy between constitutionalism or constitutional standards and values and procedural laws which implement them the second point where the court has taken a view different from the submission of the prosecution was in the context of the need for a lawyer to be present when he is produced before a court uh, in the first instance that is in other words the right to be provided a lawyer does it arise only at the trial stage or does it arise even at an anterior stage and i think this judgment makes a far reaching advance in terms of both human rights as well as shall we say internationally accepted standards 
that at the first available opportunity, a when a person is being produced before a court, he should be offered the services of a lawyer. That's right. But the court also said that whether the absence of providing such a lawyer would lead to an illegality of the trial, the court was of the view that that would depend on the facts and circumstances of each case. I, sorry, yeah. I will not be able to. I will not be able to comment on that because I have not had an opportunity to read the script of the judgment. Yes. What did you go through? What did I go through? What did I go through? Was it professional or not? That is what you uh, were you swayed by? This case may be Mahatvapurna constitutional points. Hamko Nazar may aye, or Hamne court case Hamne Peshke, or court ne Bhati seriously in points who consider care, or a important submission Hamara jo hai, court ne accept kia hai. I think to be fair to the Michael Skiri, uh, he has brought to bear totally professionalism in this case, and I think everyone is entitled to argue whatever points of law which appear to his counsel to be in support of his position. They may be constitutional points, they may be points which reflect on the trial, which reflect on the evidence. I personally think that the Amicus Curie extended himself as professionally and as competently as he could to present all the points. And that is why this case did involve, contrary to public expectation, a very detailed and a very, very intricate hearing. और देखिए एक और बात एक और बात मैं कहना चाहूँगा सेंटेंस के बारे में एक बहुत ही सीरियस आर्गुमेंट हमने एडवांस किया और कोर्ट ने उस आर्गुमेंट को एंक्शियसली कंसीडर किया है और इस केस में ये भी कहना चाहूँगा कि हमारे प्रोस ओपोनेंट एक बहुत ही एमिनेंट वकील और बहुत ही फेयर प्रोसिक्यूटर थे और इनके प्रेजेंस से भी हमारा जो प्रेजेंटेशन था बेनिफिट हुआ और हम दोनों एक साथ मिलके कोर्ट को असिस्ट किया बिल्कुल नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं अरे एक सेकंड यार एक सेकंड जवाब तो देने दो प्लीज देखिए कोर्ट ने एक वरिष्ठ अधिवक्ता को रिक्वेस्ट किया कि आप इसकी पैरवी करें और हमने रिकॉर्ड के बेसिस पे पॉइंट्स निकाल के कोर्ट के सामने पेश किया इसमें ना तो हमारे ऊपर अंदर के तरफ से कोई मानसिक तनाव या दबाव या बाहर से कोई दबाव था जिस तरह का आई 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 वांट टू से वन थिंग टू टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस आई थिंक इट इज एसेंशियल फॉर एवरीवन टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट that one of the components of an amicus curiae is his ability to be fearless. Fearless of public opinion, fearless of sentiment outside, and to deal with the case professionally. And I think that is the expectation which has been fulfilled Gopal by the Amicus. Gopal sir, this was a case where the rarest of the rare was in the rarest of the rare. Can you tell us about the Supreme Court? Tell us about that, please sir. We, as I said, कि जो अभी तक पढ़ने का तो हमें पूरा अवसर प्राप्त नहीं हुआ है हाँ लेकिन हमारे जो प्रोसिक्यूशन ने सबमिट किया वो ये था कि आप इसको रेरेस्ट ऑफ द केयर जो केस का टेस्ट है उसको आप अप्लाई कीजिए या आप पॉइंट सिस्टम से उसको अप्लाई कीजिए इसमें सेंटेंस हमारे विचार में जस्टिफाइड था